Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some problems that you will find on page number 992. Please turn to it. Always make sure that the book is in front of you. 992 number 11. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me and if you wish to get hold of me, you can do so by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at number number 11. In number 11 we are told that the volume of a right circular cylinder, a right circular cylinder looks something like this and the vo volume of right circular cylinder as we know depends on two things. It depends on how wide open how wide open the opening is in the top which is the area of the circular opening on the top and how deep it is. What is the height of it? So the volume is equal to pi r squared times the height and we are told we are told that we have a cylinder whose volume happens to be 22 cubic centimeter. The question is what's the volume what's the volume of a new cylinder whose radius happens to be twice as much. We have a new cylinder and the radius is twice as much. Instead of r is two times r and the height is half as much as this one. What's the volume of this guy? Let's find out, shall we? So we have our pi. When we open the parentheses, we're going to get 2 squared is 4, 4r four squared times half times h. This 2 is going to cancel out with that 4. And what we find is that the volume of this new guy is simply pi r squared times h, which is the same as the volume of this one, times 2, times 2 right here, times 2. But we already know the volume of the previous one was 22, so it's simply 22 times 2, which is 44. And that's answer choice D. Let's take a look at number 12. Number 12 says, 9 raised to 3 quarter. What does 9 raised to 3 quarter boil down to among the four answer choices that we have? Let's see what we can do. 9 of course can be written as, this 9 can be written as 3 squared times 3 quarter, which is same as 3 raised to 2 times 3 quarter. And this 2 will cancel out with this one, we'll end up with 3 raised to Three halves. The square root of three raised to half is simply three times three times three, and the power of half is simply the square root of it. And the square root of three times three is three, so we end up with three times root three, and that's answer choice D. Next one, number 13. In number 13 we are told that we are making some tea and we are told that n cups of tea require tea bags where t is equal to n plus 2. Well, if t is equal to n plus 2, if we are told where t is, they go on to say, this is in a restaurant, n cups of tea, uh, n cups of tea are made by adding t tea, tea bags to a water. If t equals to n plus 2, well, why do we put the n plus 2 here? Instead of, instead of making a fuss about it. Now it's very simple. 
If you're going to make n cups, it requires n plus 2 t bags. If you're going to make 10 cups, it will require. If you want to make 10 tea cups, it will require 12 tea bags. If you want to make 5 cups, it will require 7 tea bags, n plus 2. If you make 6, six cups, it will require 8 tea bags. If you make 9 one, it's just going to be 7 plus 9 plus 2, which is just going to be required plus to 7. If you do 7 tea bags, it will require 9 tea bags. What do we find? What we find is that each additional cup requires one more tea bag. Each additional cup requires one more tea bag. There's nothing about shattering. It's a very straightforward proposition. Each cup that you make requires one tea bag. The only difference is that in the very beginning we have to have two extra tea bags for some reason. So if you're going to make 10 cups, it will require 12 tea bags. If you're going to make 11 cups, it will require 13 tea bags. That's all. Each additional cup, will, from that point on, each additional cup will require one tea bag, and therefore the answer is B. The question was, how many more tea bags do I need if I wanted to make? One more tea, one more cup of tea. The answer is each additional cup requires one more tea bag. Number fourteen. In number fourteen, we are given a function. It looks like this. raised to x plus 1. The question is, what does the graph of f, f of, uh, f of or negative f of x? What does the graph of this guy looks like? The graph. This is the original function. What does the graph of this guy looks like? Well, if it's got a negative in front of it, f of x is equal to this. So, negative of f of x will simply be negative 2 raised to x plus 1. Question is, what does the graph of this guy look like? Before we worry about the graph of this guy, let's take a look at the graph of this one very quickly. So, let's first look at the intercept. When x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, any number raised to 0 is 1. Any number raised to 0 is 1. So it is just 1 plus 1. So when x is 0, y is 2. Now what's going to happen is, by putting a negative in front of it, all we are doing is, whatever the shape of this graph is, we don't have to worry about what the shape is. It really doesn't matter to us. The very, very first condition that we must fulfill before we worry about what the shape of the graph actually is, before we worry about the shape at all, the very first condition we have to meet is that because of the negative sign in front of it, whatever the shape is, it's going to flip it. And if you flip it, if this one has a y-intercept of positive 2, the new graph that we're looking for has to have y-intercept of negative 2. And right there is a good place, a good junction to pause and see which one of these four answer choices does not meet that condition, the condition of the y-intercept being negative 2. And if you look at the answer choices, if you look at the answer choice to see which one does not have a y-intercept of negative 2, we see that A has a y-intercept of positive 2, which is the y-intercept of the original function, not the negative one. That's not it. Answer choice B, I have to keep looking here, answer choice B has a y-intercept of negative 1. Be careful. We don't want a y-intercept of negative 1, we want a y-intercept of negative 2. That's not it. C has a y-intercept of, oh, C does have a negative, negative two, so C is a positive, positive potential candidate. Let's look at D. Oh, there you go. D has a, D has a y-intercept of negative one. We don't even have to do any more work. I thought we were going to narrow it down to two and then we'll have to do some more work. We don't have to do that. D doesn't work. The answer is C. 
since we've started this thing, let's just finish it out of curiosity. But as far as the exam is concerned, we are done. The answer is C, just based on that fact. Just based on that fact, we don't have to worry. We don't have to, don't even have to worry about the shape of the graph. We don't have to even worry about plotting it. But we're going to do it anyway. So when x is when x is zero, y is two because it's one plus one. When x is one, is two raised to one is two plus one is three. When x is one, is three. When x is two, two raised to two is four plus one is five. So one, two, three, four, five. When x is 3, 3, 2 raised to 3 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Somewhere up there. As you can see, it's exponent exponential function, of course, which is not a surprise to us. We can clearly see it's exponential, the bloody thing. So, that's the shape of the graph. And when we flip it, it's going to be the same exact thing, it's just upside down. Which is, which is exactly what we see in C. The only difference is that they continue here showing us the negative portion rotro, which we did not bother to plot. That's what, because it's going to take too much time to deal with negative values. That's all there is. Let's go to number 15. In number 15 we are told that this we have this person we have this person who drives 100 miles per gallon his car gives him 25 miles per gallon his car gives him 25 miles per gallon and he wants to reduce He wants to reduce his weekly gas, gas expenditure by five dollars. He wants to reduce his weekly gas expenditure by five dollars. What his weekly expenditure, what his weekly gas expenditure is right now, it really doesn't matter to us at this point, but it's very easy to figure out. If he wants to drive 100 miles per week and he his car gives him 25 miles per gallon. Of course, he's burning four gallons every week. If if they tell us if if somehow we can figure out the price of gallon, price of gasoline per gallon, we can figure out how much he spends, which which we'll see in the next part. The gas we are told costs four dollars per, per per gallon. Question is how many fewer miles, how many fewer miles per week should this guy drive if he wants to save, if he wants to save five dollars? Let's see what we can do, shall we? We are told the gas costs. Let's erase this part. So we're looking for how many fewer miles it drives. It's going to be in terms of m per week. We know the gas costs four dollars per gallon, so it's four dollars for one gallon. Well, if it's four dollars for one gallon, it must be one dollar for it must be one dollar for a quarter gallon. And that's five dollars. So if he wants to save five dollars per week, if he wants to cut down his weekly expenditure on gasoline by five dollars, he must purchase one and a quarter gallon less than what he does now. One and a quarter gallon is same as five four gallon. And we also know how many miles he can drive per gallon. So we know he drives, his car gives him 
25 miles per gallon and now we know that he has to buy five quarter fewer gallons per week we can figure out how many fewer miles he drives in a week let's do it on top so this is how many fewer gallons he has to buy five four gallon per week he must buy this many fewer gallons per week and we also know that his car gives him 25 miles per gallon that's the mileage of his car as you can see gallons drop out and what will end up is miles per week 25 times 5 25 times 5 over 4 miles miles per week that's the answer that's the answer but the problem is that the answer is answers are given in terms of M which is not a big deal which is not a big deal we will simply go through all the answer choices and solve for M and see which one gives us this quantity 25 times 5 over 4 answer choice A says 25 over 4 times M equals 95 we can stop right there, that's not going to give us what we're looking for. What we're looking for is 25 times 5 on the top. If you cross multiply, what will end up here is 95 times 4 over 25. We do not have 95 times 4, we have 25 times 5. This is not it. Answer choice B again, if you solve for it, 25 over 4, M equals 5. If we solve for m in this answer choice, if we solve for m, we will end up with m equals to 20 over 25. 20 over 25 is not what we have here. Answer choice C says m over 25. Now you understand that in real exam, of course, I always remind you when I'm doing this thing on the blackboard, it takes a while, it takes time because I'm explaining every bloody little detail, but I hope you understand in a real exam, we do not set our time to analyze it. We just have to look at it. We have a 95 here. No, there is no 95 here. That's not going to do the job. We're not looking for 95 times 25 over 4. That's not what we have here. Since D is the only one left, it would have to be the answer. D says M 4 over 25 M equals Five. Let's see what we let's see what we can get. If we solve this equation for m, multiply both sides by twenty-five, we end up with five times twenty-five. Well, what do you know? Five times twenty-five divided by four. The answer is d. That's how many. That's how many fewer miles he must drive every week in order for him to be able to save. Five dollars per week on the amount of money that he spends on gasoline. He used to spend sixteen dollars because he used to drive hundred miles per week, and his car gave him twenty-five miles per gallon. He has to buy four gallons per week, which we did, which we didn't do any of this work, but that's what it is. He used to spend sixteen dollars per week. He wants to spend only eleven dollars per week. Well, if that's what he wants to achieve, this is how many fewer miles he he better drive. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? In the meantime, if you want to get hold of me, as I said before, send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.